All right, guys, so somebody was asking about doing extrusions on curved surfaces. So what we're going to do in this one is going to be kind of quick, but basically when you're subdivision surface modeling and you have a curvier surface, extrusions on it, especially if you want to hold the edges sharp, is pretty challenging. So let me go through this process real quick. But just doing some number like this, Control-1, of course, is subdivide, or Control-2 in this case. I'm going to apply this, okay? And so you can hover over it, press Control A, whatever, and uh, right click shade smooth. All right, so normally, if you extrude, it's not a, a huge ordeal, right? Like you just extrude, you subdivide it again, you get something like this. Uh, you can see it's already kind of looking weird, but there's a number of things you can do for the edge down here at the base. So I'm going to turn it off in edit mode, hit this little icon. Uh, you could try doing like an inset, hitting O, and doing an outset. Um, on the flip side, you could select all the edges and just bevel them. Okay, so you can press Control B, bevel it, right? Now, uh, change the segment to two. It gives you three edges to hold there. And uh, you may want to try turning loop slide on and off as well. It shifts the uh, topo around a little bit. It may work for you, may not. All right, and then you get something like this. You can add like a loop cut. Control R, loop cut it. And, um, but what, what happens if you want to hold these edges uh, sharper, right? It's not very easy, generally speaking, because it's one of the weird kind of topologies that where you really need to up res your mesh, but there's kind of a process to it. And there's a certain time you want to do it. So, for example, if we were to apply this subdivision, uh, let's just do a level one. And uh, so control one, apply it. You can see this is all uh, curved like this. So trying to repair this is actually pretty rough. Uh, you could try doing something like GG twice, right? And then go a little this way and hit Alt. You can actually push it up this way, potentially. But this isn't the best time to actually do this. Um, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to go all the way back. And if you can't go all the way back, just delete the whole area. Alt click here, Control F, and grid fill it. Okay. Uh, what you want is to actually increase the resolution here. So we're going to do that before we actually try to do the extrusion. And we can turn optimal display off, find a nice balance here. But what we're looking for is we need this geo or the topology here to hold the curve. Uh, and we need to steal one of these edges to hold the edge. So a level two might be pretty dense. You could try going with a level one and uh, apply this. So when you go into edit mode now, and extrude it. Okay, you see what's going on here? We can still approach this as if we were doing a regular extrusion and, you know, do an inset, outset, all that fun stuff. For the most part, this isn't going to hurt it too bad. Or you could just, you know, bevel it real quick. Okay, and you just add a loop cut over here. Uh, the trick is that you need to steal this edge that's below it. And then GG twice and just slide it up. Okay. That's going to usually work out a little bit better. You can see I got something kind of weird going on up here with that bevel. Let's try to go back a step there. I don't know what I did. I, oh, that might have been just the GG twice. Huh? All right. Well, we'll pull that over. We'll pull that over. And so this is really what you want to do to hold this edge. But now we have this really elongated uh, kind of quad here. Not very good. So generally speaking, you want to pull that whole edge up as well, kind of flatten that out. So you don't necessarily move those edges in that manner. You just take the whole segment all the way through. And it's just GG twice on that and pull it up like that potentially. Okay. Now it does cause this little area here to flatten out. So you do got to be careful of that. That's why... Resolution is important on these kinds of things. And uh, you could try doing a really bizarre shift in top of it right here, but this corner is going to start to like eat itself basically um, at some point. Uh, so if you go too extreme with that, it's not going to work out, but it probably will work in most, most situations maybe. All right, with that in mind, we did all that there. So let's do the other side. This one, you can see we don't go all the way through with it. Put it right here. Okay. And, well, try that again. 
hold on control to do shortest path selection for it. You can see that's a pretty substantial shift in topo. So you can balance these things. This is where it gets a little tricky. Blender by default doesn't really have the tools necessarily to handle this. It doesn't, it really doesn't. And that's one of the things that drove me nuts about using Blender for the longest time. There's an add-on called Set Flow. Okay. It's a free add-on. You can go download it, install it, edit preferences, add-ons, install from the zip file. And then set flow is just a single right click button and you can set flow. All right, this is extremely good for situations like this one right here. Uh, you can just shift these around as needed a little bit, or you could just simply select them. And a lot of times you can actually just set flow on this uh, like it's nothing. So you just right click, set flow. Bam. If it doesn't work, go into object mode, reselect the object, go back into edit mode, and you should have set flow again. And you can see as I run that twice, it kind of shifts it around a little bit, but uh, it's going to hold your your curve a little bit uh, nicer, usually. Now, sometimes it doesn't work quite right, but it might get things a little bit off. You can still get pretty dramatic on these things. Like, you can still edit them pretty heavily and shift them around as needed. Add a loop cut here, right? And so this is usually going to give you your best results, though is working the uh, top of like this. Now this is not technically correct, I guess, but it's um, not balanced necessarily as good as it could be. So you may wanna uh, try to just space it out a little bit more better. It might give you a little bit of a round corner, but if you're careful, you know, uh, it might work out just fine. You might need to just up res again before you extrude. Like you may need to go another level higher perhaps. Just don't go too crazy with it because the mesh becomes harder to work with after that point. And uh, you could be tempted to go around and dissolve a lot of this stuff. And you can get away with that for the most part. But in certain areas, it might just turn a little too flat for you. Okay. And set flow doesn't always work out. So just keep that in mind. You might want to uh, try running set flow on it. Just kind of balances things out. And uh, this just might be something you have to do. Okay. Also, keep in mind that subdivision surface modeling, by its very nature, is, I think, the least accurate form of polygonal modeling. Uh, it happens to deliver, in my opinion, the best results, but there's something in it uh, at its core, like the mathematics behind it or whatever, uh, because of the intersections of the in poles and e poles and how they subdivide and all that. It's technically the, the least accurate. Whereas if you were using just standard sub or standard modeling techniques, polygonal modeling, the more polygons you use, the more accurate it becomes um, until, you know, you run out. So up until infinity, and then your system can't handle it. But it's still technically more accurate than um, necessarily modeling this way. This is a little, little side fact there, I guess, for you. But this one still looks better, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, play around with these topos. Just see what you can come up with. There's going to be times you, you might want to do it like this. Uh, if you try doing other things like insets and extrudes, nothing that says you can't do that. Typical like inset, extrude, and then uh, extrude again. Pretty common technique, right? And in loop cuts. But you can see you're, you're always going to get those rounded corners. Right? You could also try doing a loop cut. And if you're lucky, you can actually set flow on these. But a lot of times it doesn't work out too well. You could try playing around with different iteration counts and also changing the tension here as well. It may work out, it may not, who knows. A lot of times it'll work out, but it may flatten it out as well. So we're gonna try that one again. Reduce that tension to see what happened. Too flat there? A little too flat. Just barely noticeable, but it's there. Yeah, so it doesn't always work out in that manner. That's why I didn't show you that one, but originally anyways. Yeah, so that's um, that's how you can extrude curved surfaces and hold uh, corners tight. So check you guys out in the next one. All right, take care.